Welcome to our review on food pyramids. So what we're going to look at here are the two different types of pyramid that we can use to demonstrate different feeding relationships. So the first one is the pyramid of numbers. Now the pyramid of numbers just shows us the number of each organism at a trophic level. And a few key points to remember here. First one is that organisms are plotted as separate blocks. Second one is the size of the block is related to the number of organisms present. And the third one is that the producer is always at the base. Now they have asked you to draw one of these pyramids of numbers before and they will give you a little printed bit of graph paper in your exam booklet. Make sure you use it, okay? The reason they've given you the bit of graph paper printed there is so that you will use an appropriate scale. So, you know, one little square equals 10 organisms, something along those lines. And then also make sure that the producer is always at the base, okay? And then everything else builds up on top of it. And finally, label the bars. So just write the name, so grass on the bottom for our producer and so on. If you do that, you should get your top marks. One thing to bear in mind is that when we're drawing a pyramid of numbers, they're not always going to be pyramid shaped. What we may find is that we've got one large producer like a tree, which can then feed many smaller consumers. So while some will be pyramid shaped, others will not be pyramid shaped. Okay, so just trust the numbers that you're given in the question to draw it as it says. The second type of pyramid then is the pyramid of biomass. And to draw a pyramid of biomass, we need to know the dry mass of the organisms in a trophic level. And what we find is by using the dry mass, then what we always have is a pyramid shape. So no matter how many organisms there are, the biomass will always be greatest for the producers and then get smaller as we go up through those trophic levels. Another little insight into how scientists actually work then is thinking about how we use these pyramids. And the whole reason behind using the pyramids is to then give an idea of how things change over time within a habitat. So the first thing we do is collect our data and plot pyramids, and we do this over a certain period of time. And we're not talking about a matter of days, usually we're talking about years. Next thing we do is to interpret the data by looking at any patterns that we reveal. Is there a particular organism that seems to be increasing, or is there one that's decreasing? And then finally, we use that information to inform decisions. So if we've got an organism that's decreasing, would something like a protected habitat area be something that would help them? And that obviously comes from the information that we've ascertained from these observations and drawing our pyramids.